Welcome here to the Talladega Super Speedway. I uh, really appreciate you coming out this morning for the, today's first media availability for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And we're joined now by two drivers with Richard Childress Racing. Brendan Gaughan, driver of the number 62 South Point Hotel and Casino Chevrolet. And Ben Kennedy, driver of the number two Reem Chevrolet. Ben, we're going to start with you. You picked that. Uh, an easy track to make your season day here in the Xfinity Series. Uh, what is it like to come to a place like Talladega that where it's so unpredictable and starting your season off in that manner? Yeah, I think um, it is kind of a crazy place to come to, and, and regardless, we, we all kind of we either start at, at, at Daytona or, you know, I guess Talladega. So um, it's, it's very similar in, in that respect, um, you know, the big pack racing and drafting and all that stuff. So um, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to it and, and being behind the, the wheel of the number two car. And honestly, it's been a long off season for me. So I'm, uh, I'm just glad to be back at a racetrack and, uh, you know, looking forward to, to getting the car for practice. Outstanding. Brendan, you're running double duty here this weekend, as you did in Daytona. Uh, what is it about super speedway racing that really uh, that you like? Well, it's the great equalizer of our sport right now. You know, so, so going from a team like RCR and Xfinity Series where, you know, we have, you know, the best engine package, you know, we have some of the best aero package, um, you know, our Chevrolets are some of the best in the sport. To go from, from the team that is the, the, the has-all to the team that is the has-none, you know, and, and it's, uh, you can still run just as fast. That, I think that's the allure right now of it is that, you know, we did a great job with the Beard Motorsports, you know, Beard Oil Chevrolet at Daytona, and we had a great run and, and had a chance at a top 10, which I'm still bummed that I missed by like 15 feet. Uh, my pocketbook hurt, pretty bummed about it too. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so exciting to be able to say that you can show up in this sport that day and age of, of NASCAR racing has kind of gone by the wayside of, of the small team, you know, showing up at Martinsville back in the day. Now the small team can show up to Daytona or Talladega and make a run. So uh, uh, love driving for the Beard family. Very much appreciate what they do and very much appreciate what RCR does for me. Um, they, they put that race car back together for me after Daytona. Um, they, they, Richard takes great care of me, and I, I, I am very happy that uh, I, I've, I've found a home at RCR. Good deal. We'll open the floor up for questions. If you have a question for these gentlemen, please raise your hand. We will get a wireless microphone to you. We have wireless mic runners throughout the room. We'll, go, we'll start with Jerry, and then we'll go to Stanley. No. Damn. <laughs> Jerry Jordan kicking the tires of PRN. Brendan, uh, how's the liquor sales going? <laughs> uh, CLS liquor sales are going well. Um, we've hit a snag with our with some of our plans for uh, uh, all the racetracks we're supposed to be at, and it's it's government regulatory snags. Which welcome to the liquor business. Um, there are lots of taxes and lots of regulations. So we uh, but things are well. It, it's at a lot of places in Las Vegas. I've got uh, you know I'm very fortunate with with my family's history at, in town that we uh, we have lots of friends that are willing to. Uh, put us in, help us, and it's going better than we than our projected numbers. But of course, nobody's ever happy with projected numbers. We're still working hard. Stan, Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box. Brendan, talk about your your very first race here at Talladega Super Speedway, and what is it what that made you race? love this track so much? What was my first race, Stan? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I might have to have Matt look that up for me. Was it was it a truck or was it ex was it Cup? Did trucks ra race here back in '03 in the early 2000s? We'll have to look that up. Googling it right now. Yeah, the first race I remember remember was was my Cup race here. Was the first Cup race. That was, you know, uh, uh, an exciting day to to be driving for Roger Penske and and you know be here in a Cup car and. And it's Ben said it right. I mean, look, this we start the season at a restrictor plate track, so you come to Talladega. It's a long layoff for him. is not a big. This isn't a, as big a deal because okay. Daytona is the same thing after a layoff. Sure you know, I mean, so it's it's that correlates really well. But uh, I just I just remember how big and fast this place was. How big you think Daytona is? This place is just that much bigger. 
Um, you can go four wide here instead of just three, and you can do it easily. You can do, you know, the, the speeds are the same and all that. It's just everything is just ramped up just that hair more. Um, and I've, I've, for some reason, I've always liked restrictor plate racing. Going back to the early 2000s with the truck series at Daytona. It was Cup 2004. So, um, you know, it, it's this place is just I, I like I like restrictor plate racing. I've always liked it. I, I'm bummed I don't have all the stats to show how well we've run, uh, especially back in those days. You didn't have average running positions and stuff like that. We've always been near the front. I mean, hell, I remember Dale Jr. landing on top of me one year. I was running seventh. You know, second, third, fourth, and fifth went underneath him, and the chicken little of the sky fell on top of me. So I mean, it's like. Some days at research plate racing, man, you just, you know, some days you're the chicken, some days you're the egg. But uh, it, it's, I just, I like these type of places. They're fun. It's, it's a mental type of racetrack. It's fun. It's very fun to be cerebral on the track. We'll go to the right here to Caleb. Caleb Whistler, Speedway Dodgers. Ben, over your extended off season, what have you done to prepare yourself for today, for the rest of the year, and in, in the Xfinity Series for GMS and RCR? Um, just honestly try to stay as fresh as I can. Um, so staying fit is, is kind of part of my lifestyle. Um, <laughs> so I've been, uh, I've been doing that a lot. And then, um, you know, just trying to research, watch as many Xfinity races as I can, try to sit on the box whenever I can. Um, I went to Daytona and Bristol and a couple other races. And uh, honestly, just putting on a headset and listening to the communication between the team and um, it's good to go to the race and, and listen to Austin Dillon, um, who's usually been in the two car, talk to my crew chief, Justin Alexander, and, and kind of understand, you know, how they communicate, um, you know, what the lingo is and all that stuff. So just uh, trying to go to school and all that stuff and being ready to, uh, to be here at Talladega. Additional questions for either one of these gentlemen? Go to Kelly to your left. KellyCrownelRacer.com. Uh, first for Ben, how much will you pick the guy next to you, his brain, about how different an Xfinity Nobody car... Nobody wants to pick my brain, <laughs> pumpkin. A lot. <laughs> um, Nobody wants to get inside there. Well, okay, so if not him, <laughs> whose brain will you pick about how different an Xfinity car uh, might run here compared to, to trucks that you've been in before? Um, anybody. I mean, Brendan, my teammates, I'm, I'm definitely going to lean on, um, you know, seeing that they've been to Daytona with this aero package. Um, you know, I've, I've tested this car, uh, at Charlotte and I haven't, I mean, I haven't been in, in a car with this super speedway aero package at all. So, um, you know, I, I kind of saw some of the results that came out of Daytona and, um, you know, the crazy racing there. So try to learn as much as I can from guys like Brendan and my teammates and, um, you know, just pick everybody's brain. Anybody that wants to, uh, anybody that wants to talk to me. For Brennan, you talked about how the Daytona 500 car um, was pretty much, um, you had RCR pit crew engine. Uh, is that the same for, for this weekend? Is it is it a close, I guess, alliance or relationship? Not, with not alliance, not alliance. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Beard is, is a, a standalone, you know, guy. He bought the car from Levine, and it's it's the same car that we had at Daytona, which is a, an old RCR car. And and Mr. Beard is, is nice enough to, to you know, uh, uh, spend the money, and he so he has another RCR motor for this weekend, ECR motor, and we we will have the 62 pit crew for this weekend, so uh, we we do have some some really cool uh, th those advantages, and you know that's that's the advantage he gets from hiring me a little bit that he has access maybe to some of those things that that some wouldn't, but uh, once again it's I I appreciate Richard letting letting Mr. Beard be able to do as much, and I appreciate Mr. Beard for for affording the money to do it because you could do it much cheaper um, I know you can do it much cheaper but uh, he's he's he wants to come and race and race well and that makes me very very excited any additional questions <coughs> well I have I have one question you know Ben you talked about your fitness regimen Brendan we're go getting ready to go back to Kansas Speedway next week uh, you know it, you're gonna take any running tips here from Ben and uh, I, for your I, fitness I ran probably as much as he did when I was his age yeah and uh, how old are you now? 35. yep I was still running a lot then <laughs> uh, you know I'll, I'll add another 17 years to the number and and that running regimen just yeah Jimmy's still doing it nice job congratulations bud I'll uh, I'll stick with my regimen okay good deal well gentlemen good luck this weekend and uh, have a great day
I can have your attention here in the media center, we will begin our Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series media availability today with Eric Jones, driver of the number 77 Toyota Care Toyota for Furniture Row Racing. Eric, uh, not the result you definitely wanted last week at Richmond. What's it like to come to Talladega with a chance just to get everything off to, to a, a clean slate, good start, and get yourself back on track? Well, you know, you always want to have a good rebound uh, after a bad weekend, especially like we had at Richmond. I thought we had a, a good car and a, and a good shot to go run up front, you know, once the race started. Unfortunately, we didn't, uh, didn't get the opportunity to even try, so it's uh, not the way we wanted it to go, but, um, you know, coming back to Talladega, it's, it's a little bit tough. You know, it's kind of a wild card track. It's, it's tough at times to really get a good result, but, um, you know, hopefully this will be a good day or a good weekend for us, and um, we'll get a strong finish. And, Get the season heading, you know, back in a positive direction. Okay. We're going to open the floor up for questions. If you have a question for Eric, raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start with Jeff Gluck and come over here to Chase. Eric, Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. Um, I'm just wondering how you rebound from a week like that. You were talking about how you want to move on, but how do you, you know, you go home, does it eat you up all week? Like, how do you put it behind you? <coughs> uh, you know, a guy told me a long time ago that, um, I don't even remember where I was. I was really frustrated about a race and, uh, you know, it was kind of beating myself up. And he said, you know, if you're going to be a race car driver for a long time, you're going to have to have a short memory. And I've always tried to remember that, you know, as much as it kind of eats at you and burns away. I try to let it, you know, sit there for a day and it kind of bums me out. But after that, you know, I just try to move on and look forward to the next week. And I've tried to do that this week. It seems like um, as busy as I've been, it's been a slow week for some reason, just trying to get back to the racetrack. And, um, just anxious to get here and get out there, but um, you know, you just got to focus on the positives and know that um, we've had a fast race car. You know, pretty much every week we come to the track, and we just need to go out and just keep doing what we're doing, and, and the finishes will eventually start to come with that. I was trying to remember uh, if if I remember right, I think it was uh, Billy Venturini. I was uh, driving his ARCA car at the time, and this was 2012, maybe something like that. Go here to Chase, to Caleb, and then to Bob. Uh, Chase Will and FoxSports.com. Eric, uh, as you probably know, uh, NASCAR declared Joey Logano's win last week in Cumberland. It's the first time we've seen that. He loses playoff points as far as like somebody winning the race, but it ret ret retains the win. What are your thoughts on the encumbered win rule? Well, I think NASCAR has been trying to come up, you know, with a way to better penalize. Um, or enforce rules and infractions. You know, in the past, obviously points penalties were enough. You know, as much as points mattered. Um, and then once the playoff system came around, you know, the points really kind of got uh, eliminated, and the race wins were so important that people were willing to push the issue more to get those race wins. And you know, obviously the fines are big, but um, you know, the big teams are able to, you know, absorb those fines. So. Uh, I think this is the best way they've come up with to really try to discourage anything. You know, I don't think the 22 is necessarily trying to, you know, break the rules. I think they were just pushing the limits like we all are and went a little bit too far. But uh, I think this is the best way that we've had so far. Um, other, you know, you can't, I don't think you can really take wins away at this level that um, I think will help enforce it. Good. Caleb, then the Bob. Hey, Whistler, Speedway Digest. We're 25% of the way through the season. How would you assess your season so far, and where do you want to see yourself in the next 75% of the season? Well, uh, you know, I guess I wish through the first part of the season we would just had more results. You know, I think we've ran a lot better than what we've really finished, which is, you know, disappointing and unfortunate in a way, but knowing that we showed up at the race every week and – I can only point at a couple races where I didn't really feel like we should have ran in the top ten. Um, just, you know, circumstances and the way these races have kind of played out at the end of them, um, it just hasn't been in, in the cards for us. So, um, you know, I think beyond that, as the season goes on, we just want to keep working on executing better at the end of the races, getting these finishes and running up front. And, you know, honestly feel like we keep bringing these fast race cars to the track one of these weeks. It's just going to kind of click for us. and. Um, we're just going to be running up front and, and have a good shot at the win. You know, I thought Bristol was kind of going to be that day, um, but it seems as things have gone, we just haven't had the, the tides uh, been falling in our favor. Go to Bob, then to Kelly, then to Kenny. Uh, Bob Hocker, CSPN. Most of the recent plate races have been won by guys who have at least three, four, five years' experience. Um, 
Is there any of those guys, any of the veterans that you've followed on a plate track that you feel like you've learned the most? Well, I've watched a lot of them um, on video. I, I followed some of them at Daytona. Um, I got a chance to see a little bit what they were doing. But, um, you know, you, I've been saying all week, you kind of tell yourself that plate racing is all luck and it's, it's out of your control. But um, you see the same guys here the last two years really going up front and winning these races. So obviously there's a little more to it than that. And uh, I've been trying to learn more about it and figure it out. Obviously at the cup level, it's kind of a totally different uh, ball game than what I think the Xfinity cars were, especially when I was running in there a few years ago. It was all tandem draft and, and trying to uh, push the limit on that as much as you could. So just a big, big change and a new learning process for me. So just keep watching the video and seeing, you know, how they're getting up there and how they're staying up there. Go Kelly, Kenny, and then Jordan. Kelly Crandall, Racer.com. Eric, with how upset you were last week, you kept mentioning you wish there was a little bit more patience because you guys were three wide on the first lap. Do you feel the need to maybe go talk to Casey Kane and other drivers just kind of get an idea of what was going on there, or is it just kind of done and over with at this point? Uh, me and Casey talked. He, he talked to me right after the race. He got a hold of me, and, you know, that's as much as you can really do. Obviously, it's not a situation that's comfortable for either driver. You know, you don't want to really – have to have that discussion, but you know it was nice and very forward of Casey to do that. Um, it's just unfortunate, you know. He said that he made a mistake, and you know that's it's going to happen. It's racing, but uh, it's just frustrating. It was lap one, you know. It's still kind of frustrating to think about that. I, you know, it's 400 lap race. We got plenty of time, and just to get taken out on lap one is, you know, really the most frustrating thing you can have in a race. It's kind of the first time I've had that, especially at this level, and um, you know it's just a bummer. So you just got to kind of move on at this point. Kenny, then Jordan, then Lee. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Eric, you're 20 years old. You're in your first full season in Cup. Does it seem kind of strange to you sometimes to be sitting up there talking about, yeah, if we're in the right position, we think we can get a win? Yeah, uh, a little bit. You know, you kind of look at the last few years and the guys that have come through the series and how hard it is to get a win in your first year in this day and age. And, um, you know, to be as fast as we are some of these weekends has been – surprising and encouraging at the same time you know it, uh, uh, it it's definitely a little bit different than maybe I thought it would be but uh, it's been nice to have that speed and and um, I would say this early on in the year it's it's surprising but um, you know I think we just got to keep doing what we're doing and I truly believe that at some point throughout the rest of the season we're going to have you know a shot to win one of these races. Jordan? Jordan Bianchi, SB Nation. Eric, last week Danny Hamlin finished in the top five, and even after it, he said, you know, the Gibbs cars were struggling on the intermediate tracks. French Row ha has had good speed this year on the intermediate tracks. Wondering if you guys are working closer with them, or they've come to you and you guys have, you know, exchanged information or what they're doing to try to pick your brain. Yeah, it goes both ways. You know, I mean, we've leaned on JGR, and JGR has leaned on us, obviously, this year a little bit more than maybe past. Um, French Row's just done a good job of being fast every week and having really good race cars. I feel like uh, we've been some of the best Toyotas every week. Um, been right up there, right up front still. So they have leaned on us some and trying to, you know, bridge that gap. Um, and, and like I said, you know, it goes both ways. I think it's, uh, it's, it's nice to have um, another team that you can kind of uh, look over on and, and kind of uh, compare a little bit other than just having the, uh, you know, Martin and I to compare on. So it's not, you know, a true teammate thing, but uh, it's just nice to have that there available to you. We, oui. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. Um, Kyle Larson was on uh, Sirius XM yesterday and said you were the life of the party up in, in New York. You say you don't bring your friends to the racetrack, and, and I respect that because I think it's old school. You don't want to have relationships with guys that you're trying to kick their ass on Sunday. Um, but now that you've had a little time to spend in Cup, are you more comfortable around those guys? Do you see the balance of, of at least having a cordial relationship with them as opposed to, you know, just keeping the blinders on when you show up at the racetrack? Well, you know, there's – when I say I, I bring my fr friends to the racetrack, that's true to a sense. But, you know, I'm not just going to ignore these guys. You know, I, I, I still talk to them and still – have a, uh, a relationship with them. I know all the guys, you know, so, um, you know, if we're around and hanging out, yeah, I mean, we're going to, we're going to hang out and, and have fun. So, um, it just goes both ways. I, I, when I say I bring my friends to the racetrack, it's more of a sense that, you know, when we're out on the track racing, 
Um, I don't look at any of the guys as my buddy or somebody I'm going to go hang out with tomorrow night. And and um, so it's just a, it's just a, it's kind of hard to explain in a way. But uh, you know, you're still cordial with the guys. You're not going to um, just blow them off for no reason. More than any sense, you're trying to be, you know, the tough guy out there. Yeah, it's definitely um, a little bit of our job. I feel like you know, if we if we're going to be here for a long time, we have a pretty big or tall order in front of us of bridging that gap. I feel like, and we have a pretty big opportunity to do it as well. So it's um, you know, it's it's a big role to take on. Uh, it's one that's going to be needing to be filled with Dale retiring, and you know, a lot of our. Uh, top drivers getting up there and getting older and, and I'm sure thinking about retirement at some point so I feel that um, you know I feel the need to want to do it I want to uh, be able to help in any way I can on that front I'm not exactly sure of the way to do it yet you know it's uh, I just haven't been around long enough to to really bridge that gap and, and learn what um, is going to be wanted or needed out of us but you know I think it's definitely there for us and, and uh, we definitely feel that need and that pressure to want to uh, want to be a part of that. Well, Eric, thanks for taking the time to join us today, and uh, good luck this weekend. All right, thanks, man. Yeah. If I could have your attention here in the deadline room, we will continue on with today's media availability here at Talladega Super Speedway with a pair of NASCAR Xfinity Series drivers who put on a heck of a show here last year. Uh, incredible finish. We have Elliot Sadler, driver of the number one, one main financial Chevrolet, and we have Brennan Poole, driver of the number 48, DC Solar Chevrolet. Elliot, uh, winning this race last year in that finish, two of your 13 wins have in the Xfinity Series have come here at Talladega. What is it about this place that really suits your driving style? I, I don't know. I think I, I learned a lot here early in my career. Um, I had a great teacher in Dale Jarrett uh, that taught me a lot about strategy and drafting and who to draft with and all those things. And you know, we were able to win two of the last three and should have won the other one as well. So we, we were in position to do it, I should say. And So, I mean, we're going to have a, another fast car again. Uh, we know this weekend I, uh, the car I had at Daytona was the fastest car I probably had in my entire life. And uh, we got wrecked leading the race. So uh, we, we fixed it up and brought it here, and we're going to try to go after it again. I mean, Talladega is definitely a different animal, especially now with the stage racing. But hopefully we can keep ourselves in position all day long and and uh, be, be in the right place at the right time and go after it when the time counts. Brennan, so, so close here last year. How does, how does that, you know, what kind of confidence does that give you coming into this race uh, this weekend to, uh, to know that you can do yeah, it the Yeah, I mean, I've had some really fast cars at the, at the Super Speedways. Um, you know, we were really fast at, Day at Daytona, uh, both races last year, and we were really fast at the start of the year. Um, this year, ran inside the top five the, the whole race, so... Um, you know, I got to have the same race car. We fixed it up also from Daytona. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, to seeing, uh, you know, the kind of speed that we have in, in a race car for this weekend. Um, but, yeah, you know, I, I feel like I, I learned some things um, last year here when I got to race with Joey and, and uh, with Elliot. You know, I was, I was trying there at the end to get Elliot behind me <laughs> on, that, on that restart, but I kind of got stuck because I chose the outside the restart before and ended up being second when the caution came out. So I didn't get to choose. But, um you know, it's just a, a lot of fun racing here at Talladega, and, um, you know, it seems to be uh, just something I've got a little bit of a good feel for, and, and um, so I'm excited about uh, coming back here and racing again and have another shot at it. Okay. We're going to open the floor up for questions. If you have a question for these gentlemen, please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start here with Kenny. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Elliot, you talked about, you know, coming here with, with the stage racing now. Is, is it a different approach for stage racing for like Talladega and Daytona as opposed to a mile and a half or a short track? Do, do you have to look at those differently and you're not, you're not approaching them the same way? I think it's definitely a lot different, uh, Daytona and Talladega. And, and the reason is I don't feel like every team can get a stage win at every track we go to, but I think every team has a better chance of getting a stage win here. I, I think it brings more teams into play. 
So when you get down towards when we got to Daytona and we got down towards the end of the stages, I think more teams are in play to, to get those bonus points than, than what you have on like a mile and a half or like Richmond last week uh, because where one or two cars are kind of dominant here, you're all tied together. So one good move with the right push, you can go from eighth to leading in, in, in two laps. So I think definitely the strategy is a lot different here and, and it brings um, a better opportunity to more cars across the board to, to get some uh, bonus points here at Talladega just like it was at Daytona. Additional questions? Go to Bob here, front. Bob, what's the weather report today? Uh, didn't have it down okay. I know you're up on it. That's yeah, I understand. That's a good point. Um, Bob Pockers, ESPN. Elliot, I don't want to cost you any drafting partners on the Cup side, but I'm curious, what should what should those who are kind of outside the sport or us here in the media think when we see the penalty like we saw in, on the Cup side to Logano? Uh, do we think like, well, they're they're cheating, cheating? Do we think that well, everybody's pushing the rules and they just got caught? What 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 should what should we think? I mean, my opinion is, um, you know. I don't want to say too much, but if you're not pushing the rules in either series, but especially the Cup Series, because there's so many smart people on each team, so everybody has the same access to the same data on what you're trying to do. If you're not pushing the rules and pushing the envelope, you're going to run 30th every week. And the competition is so close on the Cup side now. There's, if you look at the times at Richmond or Texas or whatever, I mean, if, if you're a tenth off, you're not running for the lead, you're running a 20th. So I think every team is really pushing the envelope to get the maximum speed out of their cars. And then sometimes you, you might go past the limit and, and NASCAR looks at your car and finds something they don't like. But, I mean, you, you've seen other drivers' tweets this week. Skew is the magic word, guys. Skew is speed. The number one thing we know in our sport right now is if, we can get, if I can get more skew in my car than Bob, you can get in your car, I'm going to run faster than you. Period. There, there is no other, there is no negative to getting skew in your car. So that being said, I just think people, teams are pushing the envelope. And, you know, NASCAR catches you, then they should penalize you. And that's really all. I don't, you know, I didn't read up on exactly what it was uh, they found, you know. So, but that, that's my opinion, that, that you got to push the envelope to the, to the edge or you're not even going to have a chance to compete. Go to the back to Tucker. Tucker White, SpeedwayMedia.com. Uh, Elliot, the late Barney Hall used to say that they we don't race anywhere in the world like we do at Talladega. Slightly paraphrased, of course. But given that we also do this style of racing at Daytona, what exactly makes racing here any different from, say, racing at Daytona? Uh, uh, to me, it's a big difference. Um, it, it is restrictive plate racing, and we have the same way the bumpers and stuff line up. But Daytona, there are some handling characteristics involved. The turns are a lot tighter. The course is a lot more narrow. The travel is more of a sharp corner. Uh, you have some handling characteristics. Where, you, where two wide is good, three, three wide is, is not real good at, at Daytona. We can run three and four wide around here all day long. The corners are a lot longer. It's a little bit more banked. The travel is not as sharp as a turn. So handling is not a characteristic. So what that means is more people are in play. Uh, Brennan and I can be drafting here together at Talladega and be way more aggressive through the corners and through the travel than we can at, at Daytona. And I think that uh, creates more three-wide racing, more bump drafting, more side drafting, those kind of things. The biggest thing that hurt us in Daytona is, you know, NASCAR took a bunch of downforce off our Xfinity cars. And a lot of these young guys didn't realize that, and they were running all into each other trying to bump draft at Daytona, and it picks your back wheels up off the ground. And we're going to see that again here this weekend to, to guys really figure out what's going on. But Talladega, to me, offers more opportunity to more people because there's no handling really involved at all through the corners. Everybody's car handles good here. So if you find a hole, you go. Go next to Jessica. Jessica Revin of NASCAR.com. This is for Brennan. Um, this finish last year for you, I mean, you were just this close to getting the victory. Um, is there a bit of unfinished business coming in here this weekend? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, you know, our guys have been calling it Redemption Weekend this, this week. But, um, you know, every race that we go to, we want to win. Um, but, uh, you know, last year, this is where we were the closest. It seems like, for whatever reason, I can just finish third. I've got several thirds. I need to, like, break <laughs> the plane a little bit and get get up to battle for some of these wins and lead some laps and just be a little bit more in contention. But, um, 
you know, I, I think uh, this is a good place to, to come back and do it. We definitely have a lot of uh, confidence coming into this weekend. But, um, you know, really the, you know, even last week, you know, these next string of races are really good tracks for me. Um, you know, Richmond, we were really fast and qualified really well, just didn't have the, the race go the way that we wanted it to. And then, um, you know, this weekend, obviously, is a good opportunity for us. And then going uh, to Charlotte, uh, last year we run in the top five, both races, and, um, you know, had a parts failure that kept us from moving on in, in the playoffs. So, um, you know, I'm excited about these uh, next several weeks and, and feel like, um, you know, we have just a good opportunity as anybody. You know, it's like Elliot said, that everyone, all the cars handle so good here that r there's so many people that have, uh, you know, an opportunity to win a race that really it could be anybody. So um, it's really about just putting yourself in that position to be able to make it happen. And, and um, you know, I feel like we got a good team and a, and a fast car uh, where we can be up there and be in position to, to win tomorrow. We're going to go to your back left to Kelly. Kelly Crandall, racer.com. Uh, Brennan, you just mentioned, you know, the top fives and the consistency. Is it also, is it a little bit surprising or, or frustrating at this point that you haven't been able to break through for a win? Um, yeah, you know, I definitely think um, towards the middle of last year, I think mentally I was getting frustrated because um, it had been a little bit easier for me and uh, coming through the ranks to win. You know, I've won in everything that I've sat down into this point. So, um, you know, definitely that was putting a little bit, uh, probably too much pressure on myself to, to perform and, and um, you know, just ended up causing me some, some probably more damage than it helped. Um, but. Uh, towards the end of last year, I kind of got in the right place mentally and, and felt like, um, you know, any week I could go in and, and uh, contend for a win. And um, I think you saw that uh, as we started to get into uh, the playoffs last year. I think we had like 10 top 10s in a row um, and we had like three or four top fives at the end of the season. So, um, you know, I feel like, um, you know, my team and, and myself are, are in a place where, um, you know, we're starting to have really fast cars. Uh, every week like we had last week at Richmond uh, where we're going to be able to start putting ourselves uh, in position to win more often and and help me learn some of the things that I need to learn racing up front a little bit more and and eventually get us over that hump and, and get to victory lane so I feel like everyone's uh, doing a good job on, on this DC solar team and and um, you know I feel like uh, I'm, I'm ready to win now so just have to uh, go in each week and, and stay focused and, and um, do my job and and uh, everybody on the team uh, is doing theirs, and we'll be able to put ourselves uh, uh, in that place and, and in victory lane. So I'm excited. Uh, like I said, I, you know, these next string of races are really good tracks for me. I've been uh, pretty successful at them in the past last year. So uh, I'm just excited to go to the track each week and know I'm going to have a fast car and, and um, have an opportunity to win. Okay, we're going to go to Reed, then to Kenny. Uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. For both you guys, um, does the position of the start-finish line here really make you have to hold back on that final lap before making a move? And, and is it harder to gauge where to make the move because it's an unusual place? Well, uh, I think last year if this, the start-finish line would have been in the tri-oval, you know, Joey probably would have won the race. And uh, there might not have been a crash or any of that mess, you know. I, I, and I think you see it quite often in, on the cup side too, um, you know, that, that extra distance um, just creates a little bit, um, a little bit different finish, you know, guys can kind of set up a little bit differently and try to, try to make, uh, uh, you know, make some moves and make some things happen and wait a little bit longer. Um, but, you know, it, it's still all about timing. Uh, if the start finish line was in the trioval, maybe guys would do something a little bit different to time it a little bit differently, you know, so, um, but I do think it creates a little bit more excitement here than, than Daytona. Some of us kind of like they knew what they were doing, you know, when they moved it there. They just, to, to bring the travel more into play, I think it was a good move on the tracks part to, to add that just much more excitement uh, coming down to the start-finish line, definitely. Go to the middle to Kenny. Kenny Bruce, for Elliot again. If I text Sadler Scoop, what kind of message am I going to get back from you? You're going to get some cool messages, man, uh, for your what? voicemail uh, that you can play tricks on other people with. It's like I'm answering your phone, so you need to do that. I think that's good for you. And I tried to speak as clearly as I could so you can understand <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a one main game. Yeah. Good deal. We'll start your texting, everybody. And yeah. gentlemen, have a great race out there this weekend. Thanks, Take guys. Care. Thanks. Bob, let me know how the weather goes. Let me check in. Staff, if I could have your attention now in the deadline room, we'll continue on with today's Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series media availability. And we're joined by Joey Logano driver the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford for Team Penske, a two-time winner here at Talladega Super Speedway in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. 
I know you've, you've experienced the highs of the highs and the lows of the lows this week. How eager are you just ready to get on the, on the racetrack and get going? <laughs> oh, of course, we're, we're ready to get on the racetrack. Any week we're ready to get on the racetrack, no matter what. But, um, you know, Talladega has been a, uh, a good racetrack for us uh, in the past. Um, really, it's either really good or really bad, in all honesty. Uh, we've either had a, a car that's capable of winning or, or, we, or we crash. Uh, it kind of seems how it is for, for this team. But, uh, you know, it's a, I'm all right with that. <laughs> Come to being okay with, uh, with that, um, you know, the way these races play out. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to getting out there and, and knocking a little bit of the rust off. Every time you come to these super speedways, uh, you haven't done it in a little bit. It takes a, a lap or two to kind of get used to the lingo again with your spotter and, and, and what's going on and getting used to that, that four wide uh, draft that you see here at Talladega. It makes it a lot of fun for us. So, ready to get out there and have some fun today. Good deal. We'll open the floor up for questions. We will start over here on the right here with Lee and then go to Bob. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. Can you just talk a little bit about how this win feels to you personally since it is encumbered? I mean, uh, how do you view it? Do you view it like any other win that you would have? Um, you know, it, I, I personally do, yes, because I think what, what happened was something that's very, very small. Um, you know, the, the um, what we got in trouble for was, was something that really didn't make our car any faster. Um, it wasn't enough uh, to make it much faster. So. Um, you know, personally, inside, I, I still look at it as a win. Um, but obviously, from, from the outside, it's uh, we've lost all the benefits of the win. Um, you know, we've lost the, the, the playoff points. We've lost a lot of regular points. We've lost Macrucci for a couple of weeks. We've lost some cash. Uh, you know, the, the, the penalty is, is, is pretty severe. Um, you know, with that being said, uh, you know, like I said, it wasn't like it was a, a, a big thing, but the, the uh, rule is written in black and white, and uh, we pushed a little bit too far, and and we'll pay that penalty, and we'll move on, and uh, and attack again. So uh, the silver lining to it all, I think, is is this team has a, a great attitude, um, and we're able to, um, you know, obviously race uh, very hard, and and um, you know, we race aggressively, whether that's apparently everywhere, but we race aggressive on the, on the racetrack and, and off the racetrack, and uh, and that's why we're successful, and that's why we win races. Um, and, and we're going to continue to do that because we have the right attitude to, to go out there and, and push hard. And, um, you know, we'll get through this little tough time without our crew chief, uh, you know, but we have a lot of depth at Team Penske that we can, um, you know, look back at that. And, and we'll have uh, Greg up on the box for Sunday. And we have Miles, our, our race engineer, which is involved with every step of the way uh, every single week with Todd um, every weekend. Uh, so that, that'll be, uh, I think, a great fit. He's been with us for a while now. And he knows me, and, and we have a great relationship as well. So we're able to, uh, he knows the right questions to ask me to get the information out that he needs to, to make the adjustments. So um, you know, is it going to be tough? Yes. Um, do I feel like we're uh, as prepared as we possibly can be? Yes. OK, we'll Thanks. go next to Bob, then to Jenna, then to Mike, and then Jordan. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. You said the penalty was severe and was was something small do you feel it was too severe and then also what do you guys where do you guys go from here some people would say well don't push it as hard some people might say it's quality control others might say you just need to swerve better after a race it has nothing to do with swerving um, with with what happened um, you know it's just a matter of uh, um, you know I, like I said I, I drive the car I don't really know what's <laughs> what's underneath the piano <laughs> switch all the time uh, from what I was told is uh, you know we we uh, you know, just had a small gap underneath the uh, you know truck arm to the to the housing, from what I was told, uh, from what I understand of it, um, and it's very very small. Uh, and um, you know the rule is black and white that it must be flush, uh, and it probably very apparently had a little bit of a gap. Like I said, it wasn't a big deal, but it is black and white, and for that reason, we'll have to pay a penalty for that. Go to Jenna, then the Mike Embry, and then the Jordan. Jeremy, any idea? Uh, both the two and the twenty-two were taken back. Why one would pass and the other wouldn't? Probably a better question for Travis or, or um, someone that, that's a little bit more into the technical side of it. Um, as a race car driver, yes, I might in tune of what's going on um, to a certain point, right? Not not completely as, as much as uh, the guys that are actually building the cars. So. Um, I don't want to give you the wrong answer, so probably a better question for, for Travis or uh, or one of the Team Penske uh, you know executives. Could you sort of answer this for Todd? You're adamant that it did not, because Brad apparently did swerve. Is, 
It has nothing to do with swerving. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Go next to Mike. Mike Hembry, USA Today. Joey, there's quite a string of penalties involved with this. Uh, some of that's over, but what's the biggest penalty going forward? Is it losing Todd for a couple of weeks? Is it losing the, the count of the win? What, what's, what's the biggest damage? <laughs> D, all the above. <laughs> it is tough. Um, you know, losing Todd is a, is a very big piece of our race team, um, and that's, that's something that's very challenging. Um, losing the, the playoff points is something that's very big as well. Uh, and then you think about this 25 uh, regular season points, you know, that's basically uh, playoff points if you want to look at it that way, if it's the way to set us up for, uh, you know, at the end of these first 26 races of, of uh, you know, the way the playoff points are handed out, uh, that's a pretty big hit as well. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're taking the hit for sure, um, you know, and it's, it's uh, not going to be easy to overcome it. But like I said, when any time something like that happens and um, you get a lot of the the, uh, I guess the knockback from uh, media or fans or whatever you're going to hear, it, it drives you to win a little bit more. Um, so we're looking at silver lining as something that's making us uh, drive to, to win more, make us a little bit more determined to, to make it happen. And, um, you know, so I think we can make up those points with the right attitude. Joey Jordan, Jordan Bianchi, SB Nation. Uh, fairly or not, this is the second penalty Penske's had this year when you take into account what happened to Brad earlier this year. <laughs> is it fair to say, you kind of guys got, have gotten this reputation of you know, kind of pushing things a little bit. Is it fair? Is that a fair reputation? Uh, do you like having that black hat of the team that is kind of you know, running afoul of inspectors? Or what's your, what's your impression of that? Honestly, um, I, I don't believe that uh, we wear a black hat or anything like that. I think we're the most professional organization out here. Uh, I think we, we push as hard as we can because we're looking for hundredths of a second. Every race team is. The fact of the matter is we're winning right now, and when your car wins, it gets put through tech a lot, right? That's, that's the way I look at it is, is that we're, we're successful right now, and, and that's why our car uh, has to go through tech. And um, that's just part of it. But we're going to have to push as hard as we can to be successful. Um, and sometimes do you go over that line? Uh, apparently, every now and again, y you may, but y you have to find that edge and get right to it. Um, and it's a fine line. Like I said, if you go a little bit over, we're sitting what we're talking about today. Um, so it, that's, that's clear. The communication's clear uh, to the race team about that. Um, you know, but we, we have to find, we have to get as close to that edge as we possibly can to be successful to actually win races. Okay, we're going to go to the left to Jerry, then the right to Caleb, then up front to Bob and the Chase. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires.net and Performance Racing Network. Joey, uh, a lot of times, you know, fans lash out on Twitter. They call teams cheaters, things like that. You guys, you push, you talked about pushing the envelope, but you owned this. You came out, you said we did it, it's over. We'll take our penalty and go on. What a, a lot of people responded with a lot that shows integrity on your part and the team's part. Can you address that? Uh, like I said, I feel like. Um, you know, Roger Penske is a, is a stand-up person, um, and he uh, take things, takes things like a man. You know, he, he understands the, the situation. He's, he's, a, he race, he's a racer, right? He races to win, but um, he has a lot of integrity, and he's a very professional person, and I feel like our, our company is the most professional company in the sport. And I, I feel like every one of you guys would probably agree with that. Um, I, I know from internally, seeing how things are done, I, I believe that for sure. Um, you know, and, and, you know, anytime there's controversy, um, I'm a big believer of hitting it head on and, and talking about it because the, the, the more you kind of hide from something, the, for one, you look guilty, and two, people are going to speculate a lot of different things on what it was and how bad it's going to be. Um, and that's not just with something like this today. It, it could be anything, you know, I mean, in life, right? If you have a, an issue with your, your wife or your friends or whatever, you're best off talking about it as soon as you can and not letting it sit. Uh, and I think we've taken that approach um, with, with any situation that comes up is that, hey, let's hit this head on, let's talk about it, let's get out, uh, you know, what actually happened and what's the story and, and, and let's move forward, let's get past it, move on and, and, and focus back in on winning races and not worried about, uh, you know, what, what stories are written about us or blah, 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 you know. Go to Caleb on your right and then the Bob and then the Chase. Caleb Whistler, Speedway Dodgers. Penalty aside, how would you assess the first 25% of this r season, and what are, do you see as your strengths and weaknesses going into the next quarter? Yeah, it's a, a great question. Um, you know, for us personally, uh, as a 22 team, we've, uh, you know, we were able to kick off the season great with the win at the Clash. 
uh, that was nice. And we've uh, since then had decent speed in our cars. The beginning part of the year, we, uh, we didn't execute perfectly um, during the race, so we didn't get made many stage points, but we were able to recover really well and get a lot of top fives and top tens so far this year. Um, our average finish is great. Uh, you know, I think, you know, um, you know, last week we you know to get through and win the race. That's a, a nice thing. Obviously, this is a little bit of a setback. Uh, you know, so I think in general we're doing a good job. Uh, I think we've cleaned up the mistakes that we had earlier in the year um, to where now that we're, we're running as well as we should during the event, which is going to help us score the stage points because we all know how big that is right now. Um, and, and it will be you know forever so uh, you know I think the fact that we cleaned up our races a little bit that's a big deal um, and our speed still really well right we have good speed in our cars so those wins will start clicking off uh, is good so um, I, I feel happy at where we're at I think we have an average finish of around sixth or seventh um, with the blown right front at, at, at Phoenix and a 30 something finish uh, there so um, you know I'm proud of uh, the way we've handled our uh, situations this year and, and the finishes that we've been getting um, and the way we've been recovering, I think that's an A+. Plus, um, and I think we've cleaned up to where we don't have to recover as much, hopefully, here in the future. <laughs> Bob? Uh, Bob Cocker, ESPN. Um, obviously, with the new rear suspension rules this year, it seems to be a focus of NASCARs. And everybody talks about, you talk about pushing, pushing the envelope. So after wins, are you, like, nervous? Are you waiting for Tuesday? I, I mean, do you? think like eventually something's going to happen where you're going to fail if you win as many times as you've won? Um, no, no, not at all. Um, if, if I'm nervous or worried about that, I'm probably not focused in on my job. <laughs> and, you know, I'm probably not going to be the best race car driver I can possibly be. Um, you know, and, and I, no. Chase? Uh, Chase Wong, Fox Sports. Um, Joe, you said going back to the penalty, it wasn't a big deal wasn't enough to really have a big impact. Um, but at the end of the day, even though you want to move on, do you agree with it, the penalty? Yeah, the penalty is the penalty, you know. Um, I don't know if the headline you guys wrote yesterday is what, what was uh, fair to be called someone an SOB. I think that's a little bit ridiculous, in all honesty. So um, the, the penalty is the penalty. Um, and we'll get through it the way we know how to, like I said. Okay. Well, Joey, thank you for taking the time to join us this morning, and good luck this week. Thank yes, you. Sir. Appreciate it.